This is the video for routine 100 of the vector game. Starts out by doing a reset to all the probability distributions because this is going to initialize a new game. And the probability distribution should start at the beginning again. Then it fills the four picked values to two. That's the selections that it will start with for the test. Then it sets equally likely to 5, sets SG to the game number, that's going to be used as a seed for the probability distribution. Then it says the test polysides is 5, but then it makes the number for the answer number of sides, which is going to be picked randomly. Here it says pick an equally likely value, and equally likely is 5. So it's going to pick a number from 0 to 4, given the seed from the game number. Then it's going to add 3 to it. So it's going to go from 3 to 7. That's the number of sides. Then it sets the test poly sides to 80. And then it says, I get the random ones, the poly sides for the answer. Again, it does another test here and gets a 0 to 4 value, multiplies it by 10, so it has a 0 to 40 value, and then it adds 60 to it. So it gets an answer of 60 to 100. Then it says the test circle size will be set to 140. But then the randomly picked one, again, will make the circle size 0 to 4, then multiply it by 10, so it's 0 to 40, and that add 120 to it, so it's 120 to 160. Then it sets the test track speed to 6, and then it says randomly pick the track speed. Again, it's going to be 0 to 4, multiplies it by 2, so it's 0 to to 8 and then it adds 3 to it so it's 0 to 11. Then it sets the tracks S value to 0. That means the track that moves it from left to right will start out at a 0 position. Also the test track will also start at the 0 position. Then it sets space X and Y both to 0. Everything will be centered at 0, 0. Next it sets NG to 80. That's going to be the number of points there are in the make the circle. Then it sets MG to that and then subtracts 1 from it. That's going, MG is going to be used in loops where it goes from 0 to MG which has to be 1 less than the 80. Then it says there's 960 possible directions, but I'm going to have 80. So it divides it by 80 to get the change in direction for each time it goes around, and it goes around 80 times. Next, it sets the base R value to 0. That's the rotation value for the circle. Now I've highlighted another part of routine 100. It first starts out, it's going to put values in a list of numbers. The name of it is plus SS. It's going to put a 5, a 5, 15, 15, and so forth, all the way down to ending in 5. Then it sets R, the rotation value, to 0. And then it says for I of 0, and down here to MG, it's going to go around here 80 times. It's going to set S, which is the size that's going to use for the vector, that's how long it's going to be, to the circle size. Then it sets J to I, well that's the value going from 0 to MG, and then it mods it with 10. Well that means every 10 times it's going to go from 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. And that, you see here, is the index for the plus for SS up here. So each time in this next instruction, 
it's going to add the s, which is the length of the vector, the plus ss value. And then the next thing it does is makes the vector for r direction and size s makes a director vector starting base x, y, which are both set to zero up above. So it's going to go around and get 80 points for the circle. Each time, though, it's going to add the base change in r to r. That's the change in direction each time it goes around. Now let's go look at what it's doing. It's making these lines here. And you notice eight times it changed 10. So you see a pattern going around here where the ends of the lines are. And if I take the vector lines away and show you the object, there you see it all together. Now this is the end of the video for routine 100 of the vector game.